Hi, I'm Pierce Jens with Baratza Support. Today I'm going to walk you through installing a GB 2.0 kit in your Virtuoso and we're also going to be installing a new set of burrs. These parts are available on our website as the upgrade to Preciso Burr Kit. Rotate your hopper counterclockwise until it stops and then lift it off to remove it. Remove your rubber gasket. Remove your ring burr. It should lift out of the grinder. Remove the grounds bin from the machine. Remove the knob by pulling on it and wiggling. If the knob is on there tight, Grab a pair of pliers and you can put a piece of cloth in there as padding to grab onto the knob and pull it off. Now we're ready to remove the case from the Virtuoso. Go ahead and lay it down on its side, either side, and get your flathead screwdriver. If you need further direction on taking our case off, please watch our case removal video. Now that the case is removed, we need to remove the gearbox and motor assembly. There are three Phillips screws that secure it. Remove the three Phillips screws that hold the gearbox motor assembly to the black frame. The grinder I'm working on has a small nut on two of the three screws. Your grinder may have a small nut on two of the three screws, or it may not. The safety switch needs to be removed. Lift it up and off of the two posts and let it dangle to the side. Unplug the motor from the circuit board. I'm going to put the frame to the side and turn our attention to the gearbox assembly. The rear motor mount will come out, take care not to lose it. The chute gasket will also come out, take care not to lose that. Next we're going to remove the four Phillips screws that hold the motor plate to the white gearbox housing. That's plenty of footage. With the four screws removed, the motor and motor plate will split apart from the gearbox housing. Inspecting the gear, you can see the point of the damage. On this gear, there are a two to three teeth that have been filed down. This is often the result of a rock jamming the burrs. Our next step will be to remove the motor plate from the motor. You can see there are two Phillips screws securing it. Between the motor plate and the motor, there is a black spacer. The black spacer and the old motor plate, as well as the old motor plate screws, will all be discarded. We're going to install the new motor plate and it's going to be secured by the new motor plate screws and lock washers. Get your motor plate and set it on top of the motor. You want to pay attention to 
the direction the wires come out of your motor. You can see on my motor, they want to be at this angle. You want the motor plate to be installed to the motor so that the natural wire angle is over on this edge of the motor plate. This will give you the most space to plug your wires into the circuit board. Install the two 4mm screws. Take care to install them into these two holes. When the screws are in place, you should have a nice line that is made up of one screw, the motor shaft, a second screw, and the bushing. You can see they're all in alignment here. The screws will also go into these other two holes, but it is a better fit when they are in these ones. Here's where we use our four millimeter hex key. Now we have the new motor plate installed. We can go ahead and set the motor to the side. Before removing the old gear, we're gonna remove the adjustment ring Use a flathead screwdriver and insert it between the white gearbox housing and the adjustment ring and pry up gently. And we're going to do this in several clock positions until the adjustment ring comes off. Underneath the adjustment ring there is a spring loaded detent. This is what provides the clicking noise when you rotate your hopper. Take care not to lose it when you're removing the adjustment ring as it can pop out. Use pliers to hold onto the stem of the gear and your 10 millimeter wrench to loosen the nut. The 10 millimeter nut is a left hand or a reverse thread. You must rotate it clockwise to loosen. We can go ahead and discard the 10 millimeter nut and its lock washer. Next, we need to punch the drive shaft out of the old gear. The drive shaft attaches to the burr, so we need to raise the burr off of the table to be able to punch it through and let the burr fall down. I'm going to use a partially spent roll of tape to set my gearbox on top of. So when I hammer on the drive shaft, the burr will fall down inside the center of the roll of tape. There's lots of things you can use. You could use a plastic cup or something of that nature to do this. As far as a hammer, I'm just going to use the back side of my screwdriver. I have to flip my screwdriver around now and use it as a punch to get it the rest of the way through. We're done with the roll of tape. Remove the old gear. Check for a washer. Sometimes a washer will stick to the old gear. Make sure there are no washers stuck to it before discarding. Check for a washer stuck to the gearbox housing. There was one washer in my grinder. Check for washers stuck to the other side of the gearbox housing. Now we can turn our attention to the burr and drive shaft. Go ahead and slide the old paddle wheel off. On the inside of the paddle wheel there will be several washers. These washers inside the paddle wheel dictate your overall grind range. To have the unit perform the same as it did before installing a Gearbox 2.0, make sure to put back in the exact same washer setup that was in there when you took it apart. If you were installing just a GB 2.0 kit and not new burrs, at this point we would use pliers to latch on to the drive shaft, 
Steady the burr with one hand and rotate clockwise to loosen. You'll have to put a rag or something to protect your hand as the burr is sharp and it does take considerable force to remove the drive shaft. However, today I do not need to remove the drive shaft from the burr as I will not be reusing the burr. I'm going to install the new burr kit. So I'm going to go ahead and discard both the burr and the old drive shaft as well as the old paddle wheel. At this point, your workspace should look something like this. I have, I have a new cone and ring burr, drive gear, 13 millimeter nut, lock washer, drive shaft, paddle wheel, and an assortment of shims. Begin by threading the drive shaft into your new cone burr. You only need to thread it in until finger tight. Set the burr upside down on the table and we'll install the paddle wheel next. The paddle wheel has a felt ring that sits inside it and on the other side it has two male pegs. These male pegs fit into the holes on the bottom of the cone burr. The reason we're going to assemble this upside down is to ensure that these pegs stay in those holes. Next we're going to add some washers. There are three washer sizes used in the Barazza conical grinders. The first is our thick washer, one and a half millimeters in thickness. This one is obviously thicker than the others. Next we have a medium sized washer, 0.5 millimeters. This washer is not easily bent between your fingers. Finally, we have a thin washer, 0.25 millimeters. This washer is easily bent between the fingers. For the Virtuoso, I recommend shimming of 2.25 millimeters underneath the comb burn paddle wheel. I'm going to add one thick washer, 1.5 millimeters, one medium washer, 0.5 millimeters, and one thin washer, 0.25 millimeters, for the grand total of 2.25 millimeters. Next, we're going to slide the gearbox housing onto the drive shaft. So go ahead and flip it upside down and slide it into place. We're going to add more washers that will go between the drive gear and the gearbox housing. The purpose of these washers is only to make the assembly tight. We don't want it to be very loose up and down. For starters, I'm going to put in one medium and one thin washer. And then I'm going to install my new drive gear and check to see if it is too tight or too loose. The drive gear on one side it has a lip and on the other side it does not. The side with the lip goes up in this orientation. Press the drive gear on. Sometimes the drive gear is really hard to press on using just your hands. If that's the case on your grinder, you can use a socket and a hammer to tap just the gear further on into the shaft. When it's all the way on, the plastic of the gear should be flush with the metal of the drive shaft, the hexagonal metal. Put on your lock washer and your 13 millimeter nut. Holding the gear steady with your thumb, tighten the 13 millimeter nut. Doesn't need to be crazy tight, but you do want it snug. At this point, we're going to check and see if we need to change the washers between the gear and the housing. You can see that the gear is easily turned. I'm not using much force at all. If your gear is really tight and hard to turn, you need to remove the gear and remove one washer from between the gear and the housing. Next, we're going to check for slop in the assembly. You can see there isn't slop in my assembly. I'll give it some slop real quick. 
If your assembly has a clicking noise up and down, you need to go in there and add a washer between the gear and the housing. If you do have to remove the new drive shaft to change the shimming underneath the gear, take care to punch it out with a plastic or wood mallet. Do not use a metal hammer or you will mushroom the tip of this drive shaft, which is machined to fit inside a bushing. So again, use a plastic or wood mallet to remove the GB2.0 drive shaft. Now we're ready to reinstall the adjustment ring. Find your detent, that small spring-loaded black piece of plastic. The detent is flat on one side and pointed on the other. The pointy side faces up. Go ahead and set it in the spring-loaded column. On the bottom of the adjustment ring on the black portion, you'll see that it's serrated part of the way around. This and the detent are what create the clicking noise when you move your hopper. To install the adjustment ring, make sure that any point of the serrations is over the top of the detent. And then gently and firmly press it down into place. When installed correctly, it should make a clicking noise when rotated and it should be flush on both sides. I do have some extra washers that I did not need to make the gearbox assembly work properly. I'll go ahead and discard these. I'm ready to put ready the motor to back the onto the motor housing. The gearbox housing. Andrew style. <laughs> do not over tighten these screws. They do not need to be very tight. Tighten the screws in an X pattern. This ensures that the motor plate is pulled down straight. Now we have the motor attached to the gearbox housing. We're ready to reinstall the motor and gearbox assembly onto the frame. Go ahead and plug your motor back into the circuit board and position the gearbox motor assembly. There is a rectangular silicon gasket. This is your chute gasket. There's your rear motor mount bushing. And now we're ready to put in the three Phillips screws that secure these parts to the main frame. Do not over tighten these three screws. As soon as the screw is snug, you are done. Reposition your safety switch on the top of the unit. Make sure your black clicking adjustment ring is rotated as far counterclockwise as possible. Grab your new ring burr and install it into the grinder. The red tab on the ring burr lines up with a rectangular cutout on the black adjustment ring. Reinstall the case. You may need to push down on the back of the black adjustment ring after reinstalling the case.
install the gasket. Install your hopper. My hopper is hard to turn around setting 20, which tells me that I need to remove it and push down on the back of the black adjustment ring or something. Something's not right. There we go. Make sure your pulse button on the front is working. If your pulse button on the front does not work, you just need to push up to align the switch inside with the button on the front. Install your knob on the side and install your grounds bin. You will notice the grinder sounds different with this GB 2.0 kit installed. This is normal. Each grinder will sound different due to manufacturing tolerances. In my experience, after about an hour of runtime, the sound will decrease slightly as your brand new gear wears in.